Hey, welcome back. So in the last week, Google Gemini has released three new mystery bots into the LM Sys chatbot arena. And the impact that that's going to have is actually quite substantial. And today I'm going to walk through what those three mystery bots are, what they do, and why it's going to have a big impact on our industry. So the first thing is, if you've never heard of the LM Sys chatbot arena before, it's actually a battleground for large language models where you can go and pit two models against each other. And it runs in an anonymous mode. So there will be a model A and there will be a model B. And you can ask it any questions and you can do it multi-turn as well. And then when you decide which model is the best, you will vote for the best model. And then the model names will be revealed to yourself. So a lot of the large language model providers will actually test out their new experimental models in the LMSYS chatbot arena in order to understand how good their models are before releasing it to the public. And of course, there is bragging rights associated with that because the models are ranked with an ELO type score and there's a leaderboard. And the model that does the best on that leaderboard obviously gets published as a benchmark. So everybody wants to be top of that leaderboard. Now, it's not like benchmarks like the MMLU where there is a specific score you're rated against. This is more of a kind of vibe test. So as I said, three new models appeared from Google Gemini in the arena. And today we're going to test some of them out. And I'm going to tell you exactly what they do. And you are going to be able to do this for yourself. So if you've never been in the arena before, you just need to go to uh, chat.lmsys.org and then it'll give you a little bit of a disclaimer you can just click OK and then you're good to go if you want to work with the models you need to be in arena mode don't go into arena side by side of direct chat or anything like that arena battle mode is what you want and so here you can then just ask your question and I'm going to specifically ask it the question when is Olivia Rodrigo playing in Hong Kong and I'm going to ask it that specific question for a reason because it's up to date information. So the Olivia Rodrigo tour was probably announced uh, maybe six months ago or whatever. And most of the models cutoffs will be around November last year. So it's not going to be up to date information. Now, what I want to show you here, and actually this is a great demonstration. You see model B here as came back with Olivia Rodrigo is playing September the 24th, 2024. That is exactly the right answer. Whereas on the left hand side here, you see some spouting about you need to go and look that up. That is the typical behavior of a large language model because it's going to be before the cutoff. So it's just saying, uh, go check it out. And you see the knowledge cutoff here is 2023. Um, now, it doesn't tell me what the model is. It's model A or model B. But I can tell you right now, just from looking at this, model B is going to be mystery Gemini 1. So if I click on B is better here, you see it comes back, uh, model A is Llama 3.1, and I'm absolutely spot on. Uh, Mystery Gemini 1 is actually the model. And this is the major difference with this model. You can see it's coming back with accurate information. So this is maybe like six month old information after the cutoff and it's came back with it. So how was I able to identify this was Mystery Gemini 1? First of all, this is actually one of the only few models that can actually come back with this answer accurately, September the 24th. And the second one is look how short it is. Look how short this is. It's only a couple of sentences long. And this is one of the tricks of Mystery Gemini 1. It gives accurate, uh, up-to-date information, but it actually returns it in a couple of sentences, whereas Gemini 2 gives a few paragraphs of information as well. So now that we know that, I can actually run a new round and then I can ask the same question again and we'll see what comes back from some other models. Now, if we look at this here for a second, this is quite wordy responses. Uh, this one here actually says uh, it doesn't quite know at the moment. You need to go and Google it. It's not bad information there. This one here is hallucinated a little bit. It kind of knows about the Olivia Rodrigo concert but it's hallucinated a date, March the 16th, 2024. It's got Asia World correctly, so I think it during the uh, training or the fine tuning somewhere, it's picked up some of that information, but it's obviously wrong. If I was gonna guess, I'm gonna guess that is GPT-40 Mini. Let's see if I'm uh, correct. I'm gonna say A is better because it's not hallucinated an answer. Oh, no, I was wrong. It was Llama 3.1 AB instruct. But, you know, and it, and that's one of the things that you will learn about smaller models. So like 8 billion parameter models, rather than saying they don't know, they will tend to hallucinate an answer. And that's a real clue that a model is a smaller model than it is. But again, let's let's run it one more time. Now, this one is really interesting here there. So if we look here, 
you can actually see on the left hand side is Model A Gemini test. Now what is important about Model A Gemini test is you see it's coming back with I do not have access to real time information including concert schedules and it's go look it up. Remember Mystery Gemini 1 was coming back and giving you the exact date but Gemini test is actually saying just go and look that up. So I think we can realize straight away that Gemini 1 may be actually having access to real-time information. It may be doing lookups, whereas Gemini test is more of a traditional model and it's got a knowledge cutoff. If we look on the right-hand side here, remember what I said about smaller models and the one that we had before? There you go, uh, GPT-40 Mini, uh, which is what I guess the last one has, uh, has hallucinated it is it August the 12th, 24. We actually want that to come back and say it doesn't know, but these smaller models tend to hallucinate. So, so far, we're seeing a difference. Gemini Test is a fairly latest model, but it doesn't have access to real-time information, whereas Mystery Gemini 1 gives really short answers but has access to fairly up-to-date information. Alrighty, now if we look on the left here, we can see Model A has came back with accurate information. Olivia Rodrigo is scheduled to play on September 24th, 2024, 8 p.m. It will be held at Asia World Arena. Um, pretty cool. And then the tickets are available for purchase through various websites. I'm going to guess, and then it's got here's a poster advertising the event. That is Gemini, Mystery Gemini 2. So if I click A is better here, I'm absolutely correct, it's Mystery Gemini 2. The reason that uh, I know it's Mystery Gemini 2 is it's slightly longer. Actually, if you run this a couple of times, it will come back with the links. Um, whereas Gemini 1 was coming back with a uh, very short couple of sentences there. So they're obviously doing some sort of A-B test between Mystery Gemini 1 and Mystery Gemini 2 to understand what people prefer the most. Whereas Gemini test, remember, doesn't have access to real-time information. And this stuff is really real-time. So if I update the query here for a second and I say who won the Manchester United versus City game. So if we look in the left-hand side here, Model A has came back with Manchester City won uh, the Man United versus City game October 29th, 2023. But if we look at the one on the right-hand side here, Manchester City won the Manchester United versus Manchester City game in the FA Community Shield on August the 10th, 2024. So by the way, the time of recording is Sunday the 11th of August at uh, half past midnight. So basically that happened earlier today. The match ended 1-1 after regular time and Man City won 7-6 in a penalty shootout. Manuel Akaniji scored a winning penalty. This is really real-time information. By the way, you've probably guessed this already. Uh, I'm going to click B is better and it's going to come back with Mystery Gemini 2. And there we go, it's Mystery Gemini 2. It's got a little bit more information, uh, really good model, and uh, it's came back with really accurate, up-to-date, real-time information. So what does this actually mean? It means you're not actually talking to the large language model directly anymore. What you're actually doing is talking to an agent. And underneath the hood, the agent is making the large language model call. And then if it's a real-time query, it's getting routed and then it's pulling the real-time information. And then the agent is composing that together. Okay, so I'm gonna ask another real-time question and then we'll show what's actually happening underneath the hood. As you can see here on the right-hand side, Katrina Johnson thompson won silver medal in the heptathlon in Paris 2024 Olympics. Now, we can tell here that this is Google Mystery Gemini 1. And the reason we know that is it came back in a, a short couple of sentences there. So there is Mystery Gemini 1. Uh, I think that happened yesterday. That's an accurate result there. I want to look at a couple of the tests that I did earlier against the Gemini test model. And you see I asked the same question, who won silver in heptathlon? And you can see it's came back with a nuke vetter of the Netherlands won silver. So it's not got access to the real-time information, as we said before Gemini test. But the uh, the good news is obviously Mystery Gemini 1 does have access to real-time information. Now, how do I know that that's an agent? Well, um, the chances are it's using the same uh, model underneath the hood. And in fact, if we look at a couple of the later ones as well, so if I click on Mystery Pentathlon Without Tool, uh, I, I actually said, when I said who won silver in the heptathlon in Paris Olympics, 
I said, when I ask you a question, list out the function called parameters, blah, 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 blah. And you can kind of see there, it said tool, Google search, query, who won the silver, blah, blah, blah. And then it's came back with the nuke vetter. Now it's not actually called the tool in this particular case, but you can see it's got, coming back with this Anuk vetter answer, which is the same that we saw uh, when we looked at Gemini test. Um, and again, uh, actually, the, the interesting thing is I did try and ask Gemini what tools it can access. So I wrote, what tools can you access? And I got an API request error. So there's obviously a guard model as well. It doesn't want you to know that you are, it is using tools underneath the hood there, but you can see uh, it actually is. And again, when I, when I uh, uh, asked that question earlier on here, this was one of the examples. Um, it did actually say, um, I did follow up with, um, you know, which tools did you actually use? And then it says here, it's got access to web search and it's got access to NLP and it's got access to knowledge graphs. And then it says other tools, time and dates, I can access uh, process information about time and dates include calendar, uh, calendars and time zones and geolocation. And actually I sort of followed that up as well. So if we look here and we, uh, go to um, mystery one time uh, and we look at that. What's the current time in London? And you can see when I ran that earlier, it's currently 9.24 uh, and you see Saturday, August 10th, 24. So it's not only got access to uh, Google search, but it's got access to time. So I think this is quite profound because in the LMSYS arena, before it's always been large language models that you're talking to directly. But actually what they're testing out there via the API is access to agents. So rather than you getting the raw result from the model, what's actually coming back with is the agent result. And it's accurate, it's real-time information, it's obviously giving you access to football scores, it's giving you access to news items, um, and it's coming back really, really quick as well. So. I think there's a few impacts on the industry here. One is from an LMSYS perspective, is should agents be allowed in the chatbot arena? Um, that's probably question number one. And then probably uh, question number two there, which is probably a bigger one, is this the end of APIs given as direct access to the large language models? Is Google going down the path of just giving us access to the agent results? Um, and that would make absolute sense for someone like Google because if it's coming back correctly, you can avoid all these questions of like, is the model hallucinating? I showed you there with GPT-40 Mini. I showed you with uh, GPT-40, the fact that uh, it hallucinates. In fact, if I go into chat GPT and we ask the same question there, uh, if I say, uh, who won silver in the heptathlon? The 4.0, I want you to see this. You see it's doing a search in the web. So it's doing a tool call as well, but it's happening to be a little bit more transparent about it. And then it's giving you its kind of sources, whereas the Gemini mystery models are not giving the sources. It's just giving you the answer. And it's not being transparent about it. It's just coming back as an agent response. And I think that's really interesting. Um, and I'm curious if that will be the final version when Gemini 2 comes out. Again, if I come into the same question, but this time I say, do not use uh, tools. Uh, you can see it's gonna come from the knowledge base and it's also came back with a Nook Veta, right? Similar to the Gemini uh, test model. So it's just coming off of its knowledge base, but it's actually just hallucinated uh, the answer. It said in the Paris 2024 Olympics. So GPT-40 is also hallucinating answers, but you don't see it because it's putting tool calls in the way. The big difference there is Gemini with the mystery ones is not putting a tool call in the way on the front end. It's actually just doing it on the API return and giving you that answer. And that's a really important change. And I wonder if uh, OpenAI is gonna make a similar change there because, because people complain about large language models hallucinating all, all the time, the, the latest uh, information, the knowledge cutoff dates. And obviously if you're doing tool calls in the back end, then you're never accessing the model directly and agents doing the call and you're always getting the up-to-date information. And that means information is more accurate, but that does mean that we're not talking directly to the models anymore. And what we're doing is talking to agents underneath the hood there.
So I think that will be interesting to see what happens, how Gemini proceeds with their APIs. But what you can see going forward is uh, the Gemini models are really wanting to get that up-to-date information. And you can understand why they're facing competition from people like Perplexity. So therefore, if they can come back with accurate information straight away from their models and they can do it at speed and scale, then that's going to uh, help them uh, fight off that competition. And again, OpenAI is releasing their search GPT product as well. Now, just to summarize things, there are three bots there. Gemini Test, which is obviously a uh, later model. Um, it's really good, by the way. So um, I haven't shown some of this, but uh, if we look at some of the reasoning questions there, it's actually coming back with some really good answers. This is this is a great model. So I was asking it some pretty complex questions later. If I leave uh, Karamati Karbati at 5 p.m. and then I travel to uh, Pago Pago and Samoa, will I get there the day before? And it's taken into consideration the time zones. It's got the right uh, difference in time and it's came back with uh, the correct answers there. So this is a really kind of capable model. Um, you know, I asked it a question about the moon, for example. You know, so I asked it if an English person and an Australian drew a picture of the moon, would it look like one of the pictures was upside down and it's absolutely got it right? It would look uh, upside down to each other. So this is one of my favorite questions, which is uh, we're going to play a game from now on, replace the word of subword love with the, the word fish. Um, and then complete the next line of this Beyonce song, if I were a boy, I think I could understand. And then you can see how it feels to fish a girl. So whereas if you look at Mr. O Large, uh, it, it gets it wrong, right? And the reason it gets it wrong is it's probably not ingested those Beyonce lyrics, whereas uh, the Gemini test model there clearly has. So this is a highly capable model. It's ingested uh, things like song lyrics. It's got... Uh, really good reasoning capabilities. This is a good frontier model on itself. But as you see there, what they've also been doing is testing these agentic qualities, given access to things like time, given access to things like Google search. And then they're sort of testing between uh, whether um, to give a shorter answer versus a longer answer. So I think it's really interesting updates. Uh, and just to summarize, so when you see this Gemini test, is uh, the model without any agentic tools. It's probably the latest model. It's probably Gemini 2 in that sense. Uh, Mystery Gemini 1 is a probably a smaller model, um, but it's got agentic tool access. It can Google search. It's got access to time, but it's answering very short answers. Um, it doesn't seem to have as good a reasoning as a Mystery Gemini 2 when I looked at um, some of the complex questions. So I, I do think it's a smaller model, probably closer to kind of uh, the mini model, and then uh, the Gemini Test 2, Mystery Gemini Test 2. That is uh, probably their new Gemini 2 model. It's great. It's great at complex reasoning. It's got access to agents. Uh, it's got really up-to-date information, and I think when they release that, it's going to be wild. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful, and I'll catch you on the next one.